This is the third and final day of the Rally Italia Sardinia. The Mediterranean Island is playing host to round five of the World Rally Championship. Six stages remain with 66.3 kilometers of rough gravel roads to the west of the host city, Olbia. The passionate Italian fans love their motorsport and they've come out in force to watch the action. There's been plenty of drama to keep them entertained as well. Marcus Grunholm was an early casualty despite leading the event. He was able to rejoin and has staged an impressive comeback to fourth position. François Duval was running in a strong second when this happened. While Gigi Galli fell victim to one of the many rocks lining the tight and twisty stages. And Aussie Chris Atkinson hit exactly the same obstacle, like Galli ripping a wheel off his car. Former Subaru driver Mika Hervenant surprised everyone with a fine drive to third position. But a mistake on day two ended a good performance from the young Finn. Yesterday was really, really good day and also this test, at least the speed times, I was in the same speed as yesterday, so it would have been a good battle, but uh, unfortunately we had some small problems and uh, I had the storm, so end of the rally. Tony Gardemeister's 75th World Rally Championship event saw him fighting for fourth when falling oil pressure forced him off the road yesterday. He would go no further, but he should restart this morning. Armin Schwartz was producing his display of the season for the struggling Skoda team, but his hopes of scoring points were dashed when his clutch failed. The German was later excluded for receiving illegal outside assistance. Harry Rovenpair has continued Mitsubishi's much improved performance. The experienced Finn is coming third as he head into the final leg. Championship leader Petter Solberg has battled through the difficult conditions with failing brakes to hold on to second. And he's behind the reigning world champion Sebastian Loeb, who once again has kept his head to hold a comfortable lead. The Frenchman's advantage is nearly a minute with six more stages left to run. Gardemeister rejoins the final day under Super Rally rules and despite his five-minute penalty, he's still in the points in eighth. Just 12 kilometres for the opening run this morning, but with an earlier start and less breeze, there could be a problem with dust hanging in the air. It's been a frustrating weekend for Tony Gardemeister. And look at the dust as he gets away. This is going to make the stage very tricky. The Supi Rally system has given the Ford a second chance. He started in eighth place this morning. He's already picked up two spots, passing his teammate Ronan Cresta to get into the top half dozen. Ahead of Gardemeister is Marco Martin. As expected, the dust is proving to be a real problem. Visibility is severely compromised and the Estonian will not be a happy man. He's left with no choice but to slow right down at times to allow the dust to settle. With a cushion of over four minutes to Gardemeister, he at least has the luxury of sacrificing a few seconds.
It was very, very dusty. I had to stop at least uh, twice, I think, to, to just see where the road is. So it's not not easy uh, stays for the morning. Martin now has very little chance of catching teammate Marcus Grunholm, who started the day in fourth. The two-time world champion has made an outstanding flyback following his crash on the first day. He's already clawed his way back from 22nd to 4th and has his sights set on that final podium place. Granholm's immediate target is Harry Rovampera. He was only 13 seconds ahead of his fellow Finn at the start of the day. And nearing the end of stage 12, that may not be enough. But another inspired display from Rovampera. Three seconds quicker than Granholm. Third place is still his. Wow. Harry, that's the type of morning you want to start with. Three seconds faster than Marcus. Yes, we really try coming, but it's uh, incredible dusty all the way on the stage. It's uh, oof, quite dangerous. A little way ahead of the battle for third is Petter Solberg. The Norwegian checked in a minute late to the stage start to give himself a three-minute gap from the driver in front to lessen the effects of the dust. It's an interesting tactic. It should pay off, but he has given himself a 10-second penalty for that delay. Opens extra long, caution tightens at three, tight up in left. Dust and early morning sun make distances hard to judge. 40. Six left minus. And this little stall will not help the Norwegians' cause. Six left minus. 80. Keep left of a crest into four. Right minus Titans deep. Well, the tactic didn't really work. He's 19 seconds off the pace. It will be a long day. Uh, six stages without uh, any service is, uh, is long, so we'll have to be a bit careful uh, not to make any mistake, and hopefully we have no problem with the car. Those progress to the rally lead has seemed almost serene, but don't let that fool you. The world champion is working very hard behind the wheel. A win here would mean another 10 points, and with it, the Frenchman would reclaim the world championship lead. His performance has been almost error-free, and again, he sets the fastest time, his eighth out of 12 stages so far. Solberg's mistake sees him drop back to a minute and 24 behind the leader, but the battle to watch is Rovampera versus Gronholm for the final podium spot. Peugeot's number one's in charge, but the fight for third continues after the break. Welcome back to the final day of Rally Italia. There's no service break on this final morning in Sardinia, so no chance to make repairs should anyone have any late scares. Marcus Granholm lost out to fellow Finn Harry Rovampera on the previous stage in their battle for third place, and he won't be happy about that setback as he makes another push to claim a spot on the podium. Rovampera is putting up an impressive defence of that third spot. The car's not handling well, though. He's obviously hit something. Judging from the noisy ride, he's damaged his suspension. Thankfully, the end of the stage is in sight, but how much time has he lost? He was 16.2 seconds ahead of Marcus Grunholm coming into this stage, and this could be bad news for Rovampera. Rovampera. 
Ja, 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 ja. Het lijkt een like real handful en de klok vertelt de story. De tijd has ticked away. 16.3. He's lost his position by a tenth uh, of a second. With four stages to run and no service, this could spell disaster. Harry and his co-driver Risto Pietilainen are forced to make their own improvised repairs to the broken suspension. But they won't get far on tie wraps and spanners. Not at modern rallying pace, anyway. We hit some stones. I broke in my arm, arms, but... Is it possible to fix? No. I think so. Oh, we, yes, we try, but... We so. try anyway, go to finish. A valiant effort to get back to the next stage, but ultimately it'll be a heartbreaking end to their rally after such a fine performance marks the ends of Mitsubishi's point-scoring run this year. Harry, obviously the repair you made um, didn't work. Could you talk us through what happened on the stage? Uh, this uh, down in a uh, little bit left and right corner is uh, in the in the left brake. There is uh, some bumps and uh, I lose a little bit line. The car is not stopped well and there is uh, some deep hole and uh, front tires is of course turning in and break the arms and that that's it. Is uh, Former British rally champion Mark Higgins has had a steady run in the privately entered Ford Focus. And following Robin Perra's misfortune, he's now up to seventh. Works Ford driver Roman Cresta, meanwhile, is in sixth spot. After crashing out on the shake door down test before the rally started in New Zealand, the Czech driver is under pressure to bring home some bacon in terms of points for the team. The spectacular backdrop of the Sardinian landscape is probably lust on him, but it's the perfect setting for the two dominant drivers of this year to show their championship winning talents. Petter Solberg knows he can't make an impact on Sebastian Loeb's lead unless the Frenchman has a problem. But even so, the Norwegian must still remain fully committed through this flowing section, and he does so. He claims his second fastest time of the weekend on stage 14. Six left bus to keep up the request to turn early. Six right minus narrow, opens the request 16. Chop six right bus to flat, six left bus to request 16. Flat six right bus to request 40. Six left bus 50, don't cut six left bus to request 30. Line into five right minus half long, Titans four. To keep up the request early, five right bus half long to gate. Four left bus half long of the request, Titans 40, 50. Early six right minus to keep right of a crest, early six left minus of a crest to gate into five right half long, Titans keep heavy in the crest, opens the five right bus, opens the crest 40, five right minus of a crest, half long 20, five left minus half long, Titans. The Subaru driver's late charge won't trouble rally leader Sebastian Loeb. An advantage of well over a minute, the Frenchman has enough of a cushion to keep up a steady pace and avoid any last-minute slip-ups. The opening four rallies of the year have been won by either Loeb or Solberg, and the duel looks set to continue throughout the season. In Sardinia, it's advantage Loeb so far, but he knows he's got a fight on his hands to retain his world title. Loeb still looks comfortable at the top of the leaderboard. Robin Perez's retirement sees Grunholm claim that third place. Everybody else behind moves up one. No service this morning, but there is a 10-minute regroup in Tempio, a final break for the drivers and a chance for the Italian fans to meet their heroes. Grunholm may still be kicking himself for losing the rally lead, but the Finn, well, he's philosophical about the accident. Of 
course I made a mistake, but even uh, without the mistakes, I could have not been maybe higher than I am now, third. I don't know. We have uh, some problem to solve with the handling and, and uh, as well the tyres. Are the team listening to you when you ask what to do, what to change? Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I've been many years in the, our team, so I hope they listen. <laughs> On to the final three stages of the rally then, and the end is in sight here in Sardinia. It's been a competitive weekend for privateer Ford Focus runners, but there's late heartbreak for Mark Higgins. With only two stages remaining, the Brit's notoriously bad luck strikes again. The hydraulic pipe to his clutch has broken. It's making changing gear exceedingly difficult. He's later forced to stop in the road section to make repairs, and the two-minute time penalty for arriving late at stage 16 drops him from 7th to 10th. Very frustrating for Mark after such a good effort. And left five. 70, left four plus. OK. Left four plus. And into right four, then press, right five minus. Then left six over press, 40, left three plus. Long to crest and right four. Fast, okay, then opens. Anthony Von Bolt in his M Sport prepared machine is on course for his second points finish of the year. Looking promising too for the two works for drivers. Roman Cresta's on course for his best ever WRC finish and sixth place. This is the 29-year-old's first attempt at the treacherous Sardinian rally, so to bring his car home in such a strong position would be a fine result. Ford's number one, Tony Gardemeister, is on course to continue his impressive run of finishes this season. He scored points in every rally so far this year. And should the positions stay the same, it will also continue the team's run of 49 consecutive points finishes. Well, the Finn has taken full advantage of the Super Rally system, which allowed him to rejoin the rally this morning, so his current fifth position would be a welcome result for that application. Stop. Sorry, Another man who'll have to be satisfied with his current position is Petter Solberg. In his quest for the World Championship, he may not be able to claim wins every weekend. The Norwegian had no answer for the pace of Sebastian Loeb yesterday afternoon, but the eight points per second could still be crucial come the end of the season. He continues to set impressive times on the final afternoon, fastest on stage 15 and better only by teammate Chris Atkinson on 16. But in terms of victory, it's too little and it's too late. 100. Line into one left half long Titans. Into six right minus, open 30. Keep right to the crest, to five left plus to the crest. To keep left to the crest, into early six right minus 40. <laughs> So after the penultimate stage, Mark Higgins has dropped out of the top eight, allowing another privateer, Yusuf Aikilisto, into the points scoring places. Higgins in tenth. It's only reliability that can stop Loeb winning now. Final stage after the break. So on to the final stage of Rally Italia Sardinia. It's been another steady but ultimately frustrating weekend for the Estonian driver Marco Martin. 
after five rallies, he still clearly hasn't got to grips with Peugeot's 307. It's clearly fast, but he just can't get the best out of the setup and general handling of his new car. Despite his problems, he's scored points in every round this season, and he continues that trend with a fourth here in Italy. Martin's teammate Marcus Grunholm will be disappointed that his winless streak, which stretches back to Finland last year, is continuing. But his team Persia are concentrating on amassing manufacturer's points, and after the time lost through his smash on day one, they'll be pleased to see Grunholm take his third consecutive podium finish of the season. And it's set to be a fourth podium finish for Petter Solberg. He really needs victories to win back the championship crown, though, from Sebastian Loeb. And seconds just really don't quite cut it. In the last rally in New Zealand, serious tyre problems prevented Petter from keeping pace with Loeb. Those problems don't seem completely to have been resolved here. And in addition, Solberg and his team must be a little concerned about the sheer speed of his championship rival. Just a short stretch of tarmac ends the stage before the finish line. And it's eight drivers' points. Good, but not good enough to keep the lead in the championship. Petter, if everything stays as it is, that's three wins now to Sebastian, two to you. What are you going to do about him? Well, we just have to see on the next rally and uh, see if we can find some new tyres for next week. But I have to go. That w I've been overheating on the stage. It's not. Not good, no. No overheating, no tyre problems. In fact, nary a worry for Sebastian Loeb. But he did have a couple of own difficulties of his own throughout the event. The poor suspension setup slowed him down on the very first stage. But he changed the setup himself on the road section before stage two. And from that point on, he never looked back. Well, Sebastian, if you want a job done properly, the strength of his car and his ability to get the best out of the Citroen, plus his superb driving skills in any conditions, makes this a potent partnership. Formula One has Schumacher, bike racing has Valentino Rossi. Sebastian Loeb is certainly shaping up to be very much in that kind of mould. The partnership between Loeb and co-driver Daniel Elena is another vital ingredient. No pace, no problems for them. They've been dominant from day one, and in Italy, it's the all-French trio of Loeb, Citroen and Michelin heading for a stylish victory, a job superbly done by crew and team. Last year, at the end of the season, uh, we, we talked to together with a team with uh, Michelin and everybody and we said we have really to improve because uh, we will not win again on, on gravel it will be too difficult uh, and we, we worked a lot in uh, in the winter and every every time and now the car seems really to be to be perfect and so I'm I'm confident for the future eight stage wins out of 17 Loeb converts into a winning margin of just under a minute that means two more points than Solberg his championship arch rival You say you've got a few rivals, but really, at the moment, it's just you and Petter. You seem to be in a class of your own. Yes, it's uh, a big battle between Petter and me every time. And uh, but okay, uh, it's it's nice. Uh, he's very fast. Uh, Sometimes he has a bit of advantage. Sometimes me and. But it's, it's really inter interesting. Both you and Sebastian have been really dominant this season. You're not letting any other drivers get a look in. Aye, we're going to keep it like that, but all the way between me and him. <laughs> Confirmation then that Sebastian Loeb has retaken that championship lead from Petter Solberg. Marco Martin still third, despite his problems with the handling of the Peugeot. And Grunholm has now opened up a two-point lead over Tony Gardemeister. In the manufacturer's table, Citroen has closed the gap on Peugeot, but only by one point. Subaru a third and struggling to keep in touch with the leaders. 
And next time out, the Mediterranean island of Cyprus is the venue. That's an opportunity for Subra and Solberg to repeat their success of last year on another tough gravel rally. We leave for Sardinia, a spectacular event that's been full of brilliant driving and some dramatic crashes. More heat, more dust, more gravel on its way. The AA Rally Cyprus next time out in the WRC and you'll be able to catch all the action on WRC.com and in our magazine programmes on Eurosport. Until the next time out, for now, it's goodbye. <laughs>